All right, so let me do a quick overview of motion paths in PowerPoint. Um, we have an object here, and what I want to do, let me scale this down a little. What I want to do is take this object and have it animate across screen. So I can quickly do that with a motion path animation. So we're going to go ahead and go to the animations tab. Now I'm in PowerPoint 2010, so it's going to look a little different, but essentially it's the same in the other versions of PowerPoint. So go to the animation section, and then find the motion paths uh, tool. We're just going to choose line, and then um, we can change that. So right now the line's going down, but we're going to take the end point of that line and then move it here, and then you can see uh, the motion path is set. And then you can change, if you come in here, you can change uh, the timing and how fast and all that stuff, and whether you want it on mouse click or active after or before uh, or previous to um, other animations. Uh, so it's just like any other animation. So once you have your motion path, um, you're set. Now a few things to keep in mind about motion paths. You'll notice there's a green starting arrow and a red stop arrow. Uh, the object's always going to be, the arrow is always the starting point based on the center of that object. So you can see this is the center of uh, the clip art here, which you can see here. And that's where uh, the green arrow is. And that'll be the same for the stop point. So for example, if you want this to come off screen, you don't want to just drag it here, just slightly off screen, because when you play it, you'll notice uh, the vehicle's not completely off screen. And that the reason is because you have to have the whole vehicle off screen and you have to accommodate uh, the fact that it's in the center. So you'd actually have to move it over a little more. And the same thing for your starting point. If you want to start off screen, then you have to move it off screen a little. And then the motion paths work for clip art, objects, pictures, doesn't really matter. Uh, text as well. So uh, we've got our motion path and that's uh, easy enough to do. A couple of tips here. So let's move the motion path off. So you can see I can move the motion path around. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is the motion is always going to start where the green arrow is. So it doesn't matter if your object's here. When you play that motion it's going to jump up here as you can see. So something to keep in mind uh, when you're working with motion paths is if you don't want that jerky jumping make sure uh, that you're close to the center of the object and then it'll move. And so um, that's something to keep in mind. Uh, because it jumps, a, a quick tip, a lot of times what people will do is they'll have objects hidden off the screen. So they might not want the car to be visible until uh, the actual motion. Uh, so maybe you do something where you have a, um, let's insert a circle here. Maybe you have something like this, that this looks like a tunnel. And so you don't want the car on the screen, but you can do that. And so it'll look like it's coming out of the tunnel, even though the car is sitting up here on your screen. Uh, so that's a quick, simple tip. Let's go ahead and delete this, bring this back down. Let me show you how to do a custom motion path and then a quick tip on that. So with the custom motion path, um, go ahead and select it. You go to your animation, same thing, just select uh, custom path and you can draw one and um, you can see how that works. Now one of the things with drawing is you can see it's not smooth, it's kind of choppy and that's because working with the mouse, mouse isn't easy. Um, so I'll show you a way to, to make that easier. Uh, one of the reasons you want it as smooth as possible because when you translate that or publish it to flash um, when it's not smooth it can look a little choppy when it's being converted to flash. So what I do is I'll select the object, I'll do a custom motion path, but instead of drawing uh, drawing the lines as a curve, I'll just do a straight line. And let's say we want to do something like this. I'll just do a straight line. Now you notice it doesn't look right as a straight line, but I can right click on that line and I can edit the paths. And at this point if I right click on a, on a point, um, I can smooth it and that'll give me a Bezier tool and I can play around with it. But now I've got a nice smooth line. So I create the straight lines first and then I add a smoothness to it and when I uh, convert that to flash it's going to have a nicer look uh, in the rendering. So draw the straight lines and then convert it. The other thing is you can add points. Just click on the line and then drag and that'll add a point and then the same thing you can right click and manipulate that as well.